Hello, and welcome back to the Argyle CFO Summit. My name is Brittany Sullivan with Argyle, and it's great to have everyone joining us today. I have some important information to share with you, and then we will turn the floor over to our esteemed keynote speaker. First, a quick reminder to stop by our sponsor's virtual booths at any time during today's event and for the following week. To ask questions throughout the session, simply type into the Q&A chat, and we will address your questions at the end of the session. Now, without further ado, I would like to introduce our speaker, David Palmer, Blockchain Lead at Vodafone. We are excited to have David with us for his keynote titled, Harnessing the Potential of Blockchain. Welcome, David. Uh, hi, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, what a year it's been, and I'm, I'm so excited uh, with the progress that uh, is being made with Blockchain Enterprise and Web3 and the metaverse to be giving this um, you know, topical and timely talk on the technologies and how they can be um, harnessed for business. Um, so, so without further ado, I'll sort of go through um, a, a sort of discussion on what's happening in blockchain, um, you know, the sort of blockchain technologies that can help business, uh, where that can help business to position for the metaverse, and um, then maybe show you an example of how in Vodafone, where I work, uh, we're actually using the technology uh, for business. Um, so I just wanted to, to, to skip through uh, to the next slide. Uh, hopefully it will transition. And um, it's interesting because I remember, uh, you know, yesterday, it feels like yesterday, writing um, a slide and posting it on LinkedIn at the end of last year. I was in Dubai at the time. On, on what happened in 2021, and it was a great year for blockchain. So, uh, you know, we we had, um, you know, 1,082 billion uh, in terms of the cryptocurrency side, uh, size at market size. We had 240 uh, billion uh, US dollars locked in DeFi protocols. This is decentralized finance. Uh, NFT is making a, a great positive uh, impact on industry and consumers, things like art and music, and 22 billion NFTs traded. Uh, 30, 30 billion invested in crypto startups. Uh, we had an electronic trading fund approved for Bitcoin and they traded 1 billion in the uh, first day of trading, uh, over 200 crypto, uh, global crypto users, and the most expensive NFT, um, Pax Merge, 91.8 million. And alongside that, the smartphone penetration continued to increase in 2021 uh, to over 6 billion. So it was a great year. And then um, the 2022 is a different story. Um, so in 2022, um, we've seen a, a bear market for blockchain and cryptocurrency. And now uh, the market is worth uh, about 750 billion uh, and not 1,082 billion. So it's, it's, it's lost over 50% of its value. Uh, there's under 100 billion, not 240 billion in, uh, in DeFi protocols. And, and more importantly, since uh, November 21, uh, we've seen uh, blockchain lose over 70% of its value. Um, the top six, uh, six metaverse tokens lose over um, uh, sort of 50% of their value. Um, and um, uh, the same with DeFi in terms of, I think there's only 82 billion locked in DeFi now from 240 billion. So it was really down. Uh, we've seen the biggest trading exchange, uh, which is uh, OpenSea, um, report that at some stage over the past two months, um, your know, daily trading in NFTs was down 99%. Uh, but there were some positive things. Um, central bank digital currencies continue to, to advance, and there's a lot of countries implementing or, or, or working on implementation of central bank digital currencies. Uh, we saw the Ethereum merge, um, which uh, basically moved to a more en energy efficient protocol called uh, Proof of Stake from Proof of Work. Um, and uh, with, with other improvements, we're seeing that Ethereum, which is the biggest pub public blockchain, is getting ready for enterprise to start using it. And we've seen, uh, more importantly, 120 billion invested so far in 2022 in the metaverse. So a real mixed picture. Um, and I suppose we can't look at this picture without talking about you know, what's happened over the last four weeks, which is the, the collapse of the third biggest exchange, which is FTX, uh, which has uh, sent shimmers down the market and uh, caused even further uh, declines in cryptocurrency. So my question is, is blockchain uh, still uh, something that's useful for business? Is it still an opportunity for business? There are other reasons why the market's fallen. Um, and uh, 
you know, part of that has been um, uh, GDP falling everywhere, but due to an increase in energy prices, uh, which is in pushing up inflation uh, and to control inflation, we're seeing that interest rates are rising and that's leading to stocks and other risky assets like cryptos falling. Um, uh, but investment in the metaverse is going up. Uh, and the question is why? So what, what does blockchain bring um, to the metaverse if that seems to be the opportunity? Um, so, so just here, uh, blockchain could bring trust uh, to business. So where uh, businesses previously had to go through lengthy contracts to trust um, you know, and go through audits to check, uh, you know, the blockchain can act as a, you know, as a means of trust, an immutable ledger, immutable system of records uh, for business transactions. More importantly, it can also act, act as an anchor for digital identity of people, business, and IoT devices. Uh, and it's also powering this new world of wallets um, where uh, identities and wallets are interacting and wallets are holding multiple payment credentials which are linked to smart contracts in, in, in blockchains for execution. Uh, blockchain can also um, help with some of the issues that, that, that have been caused. So uh, this slide just looks at blockchain and regulation, and, and it's basically showing that uh, smart contracts um, could actually be used to uh, execute um, you know, uh, compliance regulations. So for example, uh, since the FTX collapse, so this the biggest uh, exchange collapsing, one of the protocols is proof of reserves, right? So that's uh, proof of reserve which is, show, which is basically showing that a crypto exchange or a brokerage or a hedge fund you know, has the sufficient reserves uh, and can prove it immutably um, to comply with regulation. So um, I, I think that uh, as well as um, testing regulations, and, and I think one of the biggest barriers to business is the lack of clarity on regulations. Actually, maybe um, uh, blockchain in terms of smart contracts, identity wallets, and tokens could actually be a means of implementing uh, regulation and taxation uh, and compliance more effectively. So I just wanted to take you through um, a little evolution uh, to what we see as the metaverse and Web3 and blockchain. Uh, and and then we started off um, in this sort of Web1 world, which was um, you know, an exciting world for those of us who with some gray hairs of Netscape and Internet Explorer and Google. And this was about search. This was about uh, information. Um, we then moved to the mobile, which is Web2, uh, which is typical, typified by mobile sharing economy streaming. And that brought social media, Facebook, Airbnb, uh, streaming companies like Netflix and uh, Spotify, uh, uh, sharing economy companies like Uber and Airbnb. And that's an exciting time. And when we're now sort of looking beyond it and why we're having discussion about uh, harnessing the power of blockchain for business is we're moving past that mobile area to this new world of web 2.5 and web 3. Web 2.5 really looking at uh, some of the um, blockchain protocols or the leading ones like Bitcoin or Ethereum uh, being selectively used for business. Uh, but going forwards to sort of full web 3 and decentralization we have some protocols um, like uh, Maker and, and some um, applications on, 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 on uh, blockchains like Sandbox and, uh, and uh, others like Decentraland that are actually claiming to, to sort of sell uh, and enable metaverse land purchases and retail and other things. And um, you know, we're, we're expecting that by 2030, the data economy alone will be worth uh, 550 billion. Uh, just in the EU and the global data economy forecast is three trillion, and we're seeing that um, data is and, and decentralization and new ways of data will be key to business. But as we move from where we are now, which is Web two, uh, Web two dot five to Web three, it really is a changed model. Decentralization is a different model and a different control point and a different monetization approach. Uh, to Web3. Web3 is about a centralized platform owning and monetizing the data. And uh, Web3, uh, which is decentralized, um, is about decentralized identities, decentralized infrastructure, decentralized business. And the challenge for, for traditional enterprise is how do you realign your business model um, to 
to to to to to to play a role and position for Web three, and ultimately the metaverse. Uh, looking at the metaverse, I mean, we we spoke initially about the 120 billion um, invested in the first five months of 2022. Um, what we can see in terms of the current position is 55 million active users on Roblox, which is a sort of popular gaming, immersive gaming experience. Um, we've seen the 500 million were sold in metaverse real estate sales so far. And companies like, like uh, Nike, who bought a, a NFT a metaverse company, you're actually making profits. 185 million was realized from that investment. And uh, if you look at XR headsets, um, which are considered a gateway um, device to for the immersive experience, you know, um, 11 million sold, even though 80% of them were produced by Facebook stroke Meta. And it, um, it it was part of the takeover from Oculus glasses. Um, maybe it hasn't worked, but it's just showing that there's a lot of investment and activity in the metaverse uh, space. And, and even with the current position in Web3 of bear markets and pessimism, um, you know, if you look at what's happening with the metaverse, um, you're seeing that 2024 Bloomberg, our facilitator, are, are, are estimating 800 billion. Uh, in terms of the market size or the opportunity of the metaverse. McKinsey uh, is estimating that j just in eight years time or seven years um, time, 2030, uh, the metaverse will be 5 trillion. That's against the GDP of just about 100 trillion. So that's uh, your 5% of GDP. And by 2034, 2035, we're seeing anything from 10 trillion to 30 trillion, uh, depending on which forecast you're looking at. So you're seeing that the metaverse um, opportunity is significant. Uh, blockchain, uh, if we believe will be a key, and Web3 will be a key en uh, enabler of the metaverse, then it's obviously something that businesses should be looking at. Uh, it provides interoperability. It provides uh, spend and smart money capabilities. It provides identity, and it provides access. Um, and all the time, uh, we're also seeing that smartphone penetration and, and the population is increasing as well. Um, in terms of metaverse, I just go through the metaverse opportunity a bit, a bit more, but uh, Citibank are seeing uh, that the major um, sort of uh, uh, driver will be um, smart manufacturing technology, uh, visual advertising, online events. Morgan Stanley are seeing a lot in terms of the immersive experience, uh, concerts, uh, um, other shopping experiences, uh, which which will be a significant part of it, and then replacing on uh, offline activity, so vehicle test drives, house viewings, uh, collaborations, uh, you know, uh, predictive maintenance, uh, virtual operations. These are all things that uh, Mogul Stanley are seeing as key to this, and McKinsey are seeing uh, academic virtual learning as a two hundred and seventy billion opportunity by twenty thirty, and that adds up. Right, this could. The metaverse um, blockchain could really redefine education, redefine uh, universities, redefine colleges, redefine schooling, removing the barrier of time and travel and geography, and really making a truly global and immersive learning experience. Some of that can be done now with online classes, but not things like medical uh, mechanics and engineering where you need to have an immersive um, sort of experience where you can almost touch and be there. And I think the metaverse um, and that sort of immersive experience could be a massive opportunity to really reimagine um, uh, academic learning. Uh, the other one is digital advertising, gaming. And, and for me, I'm seeing social media, uh, data and AI and security as a service is also key ones. Um, so if you look at this framework, and I'll bring it back to blockchain, um, a lot of emphasis has been in the uh, sort of middle of, of this. So uh, a lot of it on the immersive experience, so AR, VR glasses. And actually, if we're going to uh, see the metaverse as being 5%, 10% of GDP, it's going to be a lot more than gaming and immersive experience. This is going to be something that you know we, we will need to be able to access all times, uh, not just with a pair of glasses, but while we're on the move. Uh, in our jobs, um, you know, in different parts of the economy, in different uh, businesses, in different professions. Uh, so for that, I think, um, you know, there needs to be a lot of innovation uh, in terms of how we access it. And I think a key part of that access has to be the mobile phone, where we already have over 6 million, uh, 6 billion handsets. 
Um, but if you look at the other side of it, you've got sort of the physical world to experience. So how do how will something that you buy or experience in the metaverse relate relate to the physical world and your identity in the physical world and your ability to pay in the physical world and your and your liability in the physical world and your security in the physical world? And how will it be financed? And how will the data be handled? And how will um, business models uh, exist? And how will ecosystems and communities exist? How will government respond? Uh, all of this is very, very interesting. But what I can see is that linking uh, the physical, the immersive experience and the finance world will be a blockchain uh, to pro provide trust between and, and an immutable system of records between all of these entities. And I'm also seeing that the mobile phone uh, could be the link, uh, uh, the identity link uh, between the physical and virtual worlds. Uh, ensuring that where you have activity in the metaverse, that it can link back to a real person or a real organization that has jurisdiction, custody, and liability. Um, and these areas are pointing to business opportunity um, and, uh, and, 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 and also a big role for Web3. Uh, so if we look at the keys to the metaverse really quickly um, and the opportunities associated with that, we've got AI and data economy. Uh, we know that most of the data has been produced in the last, last five to years, maybe 90% of it. Uh, when the metaverse uh, starts to really take off, there's going to be an explosion of data. How we get information from that data and inference from it is going to be a massive um, uh, enabler for the metaverse and a massive business opportunity. Uh, tokens, or I call it digital barter, uh, where you, you have loyalty tokens, you've got NFTs, you've got... Uh, You've got uh, fungible tokens, you've got uh, central bank digital currencies. It's a new form of money, a new form of storing value, a new form of exchange, uh, which will be key to business. Um, so I'm seeing that that is going to be, um, you know, there's going to be, a, we, we saw that in 2021, it was over a, um, a trillion in terms of the cryptocurrency market size. I see it extending to uh, business tokens and NFT, business NFT tokens and CBDCs. Massive opportunity in how that's stored, managed, uh, and enabled. Uh, interoperable digital idea, identity will be key as well. Uh, wallets, um, you know, we're moving towards a world of wallets. Uh, how wallets are personalized, how they how, how they interact, how they're topped up, um, you know, how they're secured is another big uh, opportunity uh, for the metaverse. Also, connectivity and infrastructure. And one of the things we've got to talk about is quantum. Uh, so some of the key cryptography for uh, blockchain um, is RSA and uh, elliptic curve. Uh, and, and these are directly threatened by quantum. So um, quantum compute. So security and quantum proofing is also another big uh, area. And if we look at how this goes together, it comes together in what we call a layer two. So a layer two for Web3 and blockchain, a layer two for connectivity, and these layer two is really powering, um, you know, uh, this new metaverse world, uh, which is connected. It has digital identity. It has, uh, you know, uh, trust and immutability, and, and it has access. Um, just a, a, another quick word on NFTs. Um, again, massive, massive growth in 2021. Um, it's considered the token of business. Um, we're forecasting an 80 billion market size in 2021. It represents digital ownership, um, and uh, there's been recent uh, progress uh, in, in terms of the NFT uh, tooling uh, to make this time bound. So that then means that NFTs can be used to power mortgages, real estate rental, in-game credits, uh, re uh, uh, credit default swaps, financial swaps, derivatives, and data. So there's a massive opportunity in NFTs. Um, and if we look at this in the context of the token economy, um, yeah, there's also massive um, opportunities in terms of tokens managing and storing them, obviously in line with compliance, but I think you see businesses increase, increasingly participating and moving to this area. Uh, in terms of connectivity uh, and blockchain, we're seeing the key thing there in terms of data and, uh, and uh, identity. Uh, we we're also seeing that mobile, mobile can start to, and, and companies' mobile phone assets can start to also play a real role in blockchain consensus. Uh, and we're seeing that the Internet of Things will play a big part in this, all coming together to form a metaverse economy, which is um, also leveraging the economy of tokens, the economy of things, uh, you know, the, the economy of things uh, being a 1.1 trillion market by 2025, NFTs 80 billion, uh, cryptocurrencies and tokens 6.7 trillion and the metaverse 1 trillion by 2025.
Uh, I've spoken about quantum already. Um, and I just go on to sort of look at some of the um, questions that uh, really come from this. So, you know, how can existing businesses position um, for the metaverse? You know, how can they harness the power of blockchain? And uh, we'll, we'll start to sort of discuss that as we go forward. Uh, what can be started now? So a lot of businesses have started uh, with permission blockchains uh, to, to sort of test the waters. Um, what that's doing is allowing um, you know, a select number of people to be a part of that network or that blockchain um, and, and to trust each other and start to automate business. Um, the trend is definitely heading towards public blockchain. There is uncertainty as, the cost of, as to the cost of transaction or gas fees and to the speed and security. I think uh, some of the um, some of the uh, progress, uh, some of some of the steps made by uh, protocols like Ethereum are helping with that um, and the ecosystem is getting big. Uh, but I think the businesses will actually kickstart uh, the public blockchain ecosystem. And uh, and that's why it's so important for the security and the scale to be there. How can I tell if my business can be a, a metaverse business and benefit from blockchain? I think the key thing is that these technologies are not internal, they're external. Um, the, the, the key thing is that they enable others, people and businesses to come together with trust and automate. And uh, I think if you're external um, and you're dealing with a lot of other businesses and people, then blockchain can help. If you're internal facing, then it can't. How can we get the keys, right? So how can you get the keys to the metaverse? Um, and, and this relates back to this slide here, uh, which was sort of looking at the keys to the metaverse. Um, and and it was looking at things like uh, digital identity um, and, uh, and uh, digital identity and wallets and infrastructure and AI. And how, how can a business actually progress that? How how how, you, how, how do they um, you know become technology companies? And certainly at Vodafone, uh, you know we've been on this road from telecoms uh, company to tech company, so telco to techco. And and there is a lot of talk that businesses will become technology companies, right? So planning, you know, the, the metaverse opportunity, the blockchain opportunities won't come to you uh, without that transition. Uh, so there is a transition for businesses businesses to increasingly become technology companies to compete and go forwards. The other thing are timelines. So uh, I find it very interesting that McKinsey were talking about a five trillion opportunity for the metaverse by 2030, um, and we're already seeing that blockchain, uh, you know, is starting to, to to we're starting to see implementations by business. Uh, so I think the time to start, um, if you haven't already, is now. Uh, and um, I think positioning and, and looking at the keys and looking at your relative uh, strengths and weaknesses uh, will be key to that. And, and what I'll probably do now is just stop um, this, uh, this uh, stop sharing and I'll just share an implementation of what we've actually done uh, because we've actually implemented uh, a solution uh, for, for this uh, in, in Vodafone. So it's called the Digital Asset Broker. And I'll, I'll probably um, just share the video of how we're using blockchain. Let me know if you can see.
Okay, um, so so I will um, stop sharing now, uh, and I'll hand over to you, Brittany and Lindsay, uh, for any question. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, David, for such an insightful presentation. As a reminder, audience members can still enter questions, and it looks like we have time to review a few that came through. Uh, so, David, this first question asks, would blockchain bring a more stable currency to companies worldwide, or are we a long ways away from this? Um, I, I think stability has not been, um, you know, one of the attributes of cryptocurrency. So, so I think one of the things is it's pretty unstable because it doesn't have the liquidity um, and the correction mechanisms that fiat uh, normal currencies have. Uh, but I see that central bank digital currencies may may solve that. Um, and uh, although there are some central bank digital currencies that can be implemented without blockchain, I think the majority are going to be blockchain based. Um, so I'm, I'm saying I, I would say yes, um, blockchain and central bank digital currencies, I think, can uh, provide uh, more stability and cheaper uh, means of transacting uh, between companies and cross border. Great, thank you. And can you make any predictions as to where the metaverse is headed uh, for the new year? Um, yeah, I think that's a good question. I, I think it's heading on the up. So, so all the indications are uh, that investment is still pouring in and in, increasing in, in in the metaverse area. Uh, we're seeing a lot of um, a, a lot of proof of concepts, a lot of investment. Uh, we have to be we we have to understand that the metaverse is a journey. So, so the metaverse, a a sort of shared immersive experience, is not in existence yet. And there's a lot of um, processing innovation. Uh, uh, experience innovation, device innovation that's needed to make this happen. Um, but um, what I can say is that next year we should see a lot more metaverse uh, environments and metaverse experiences and metaverse businesses um, start to show us the first proof of concepts or proof of values. Excellent. Thank you. And we have a couple minutes left. So looks like we have time for at least one more question. Um, does blockchain only work digitally or can it be, can it incorporate tangible items as well? Uh, it, it can, yeah. So, so, so um, one of the sort of biggest use cases for, for blockchain is what we call um, asset, um, asset tokenization. So tokenization, tokenizing a real um, asset um, like a property or a factory, um, you know, it's something that can be done uh, by, by basically, um, uh, using a fungible uh, token to digitize it and uh, fractionalize it so that many people can own the asset. Uh, and then uh, basically you have a digital twin of that asset uh, reflected in the tokens. Now, where we really start getting um, a link between the blockchain world, the digital world, and the physical world is with IoT. So in the platform that we've shown uh, for Vodafone called the Digital Asset Broker, we're creating digital twins uh, of cars and digital twins of chargers uh, and we're able to uh, use tokens to finance the charges, and we're able to use the tokens to facilitate settlement between the two of them. Uh, so you can have this sort of automated charging between them. Uh, the next stage is also um, to take the data from sensors and make that available uh, on, on the blockchain and written immutably to the chain uh, so that it can be sold and, uh, and, and the origins and validity verified. So there are links that are coming with the real world, and I think this is really are going to be key for a key opportunity for business and, and a new revenue stream. Great. Well, thank you so much again, David. That is all the time we have for the questions, but thank you again for such an incredible presentation. I also wanted to thank everyone who joined us for this fantastic keynote. keynote. Uh, this session, along with all of today's content, will be made available on demand following the event. Thank you again, David. Thank you.